All right, good morning, everybody. YouTube series, Wall Street here. Uh, we're going to talk some stocks once again, as we always do, but this time we'll take um, a little different path. We'll go, initially, we'll, we'll go over the action we saw this week. Um, not just things that have performed well, even some names that um, haven't looked too hot. We'll go over them um, and, you know, get a of uh, where they're at, uh, if some of you guys are in those names. Also, what I want to do today is go <clears throat> sector by sector, especially the, the main sectors you guys trade, and uh, just run through some of the names that have caught the best activity, not only uh, recent activity, but just the best activity in general. Uh, one of um, the members of the Steam Room brought this idea up to me as a topic, and I thought it was a great... Uh, like I mentioned, I, I run into... the I run into sometimes that I think everyone's looking at the flow the way I am, um, and I don't like to do that. You know, I actually uh, I disagree with people who try to push their way of trading on you, you know, and especially when it comes to flow, there's so many different ways that you can... Uh, take advantage that it's so important to stick with a style you're comfortable with because uh, that's I think crucial if you're looking to have any longevity in this game and stick around uh, it's got to be something uh, you're comfortable doing and having passion for and the only way you're really going to do that is like I said finding that comfort zone it's crucial so uh, a lot of traders who are successful trading off low um, is not what you think. It's not all trading a similar style. A lot of different styles of trading, and at least I find it important that at least if you understand what names the smart money at least are behind, as far as speculation in the options market, you know you can narrow down a watch list, and it's as easy as let's say, oh wow, you know the gambling sector looks great, and having you know, a watch list, okay, these are the three names in that sector that have really seen nice activity or the best activity, you know, and, and going to those names. Because uh, what I've realized, a, a lot of those names continue to get supported. You know what I mean? They're not all winners or if they catch, but on any pullbacks, usually they're the first names to catch sweeper activity again. All right, so uh, that's why it makes sense. So we'll run through that. Um, like I said, go through some of the top activity this week. We'll, uh, look at some of the performances this week. And then uh, I'll take some questions um, as far as names that you guys may be interested in or questions on flow in general, whatever's on your mind. All right, and if I don't bring up a sector, you know, even if it's a subsector, um, because there, there's a lot of opportunity in not even the major sectors. We talked about uh, auto, remember the auto supplies group that was so hot, especially around like hurricane season. Um, and a lot of those sectors get attention, especially from that aggressive. Oh, uh, and that's usually a good sign that momentum may be headed their way. So we'll go through some of that. If I don't mention the sector, you know, shoot it out and um, I'll try to find some names that have seen some decent action there. Uh, all right, let's touch on the week. The week as a whole, I think, was constructive. And the reason why is, you know, the market's still doing its thing, right? The market refuses to really pull back. Um, everybody's waiting for that big drawdown, uh, and it just hasn't come. Um, but at least what we're seeing is, as this market does, just this little breather, per se, underneath the hood, they really correct some individual names. And if you're looking at the major indices, you're really not getting, or you're not, it's not bringing full attention to what's going on under the hood. And I'll give you an example. Like the transportation names, you guys remember, were scorching uh, just a week or two ago. And they got killed this week. They really got hit this week. 
And I don't, I don't think that's a, a bad thing. I think that's actually because that allows the opportunity to start looking at these things again. Uh, you guys know already. You know how I am. I have trouble buying names like this PayPal, even though it catches ridiculous amounts of flow. Okay, I just oh this is no hold on I got the wrong chart. Oh no here it is. I, I have trouble, especially if I was looking to swing trade this name. You know, pulling the trigger on an entry up here with no breather, no consolidation. I like buying things. And I like to look at things when they play dead. Not necessarily just, you know, off pullbacks or selling. You know, everybody thinks buy the dip. Not that I don't I think that's not um the right way to say it. I like consolidation. You know, because you heard me say why is that activity? I think it's fullest value comes. It gives you an edge where it, it tries to give you a heads up on where the when the momentum might be coming back into a name or a group okay it used as continuation right an indication of a continued move higher but i think the full the best edge is when a name goes dead the longer it goes dead the better and then those aggressive sweepers pop start seeing them again aggressively buying uh, you know calls in the options market and you heard me say this too it's a probability odds game this is all it is you got to look at everything you do in this game as odds and probability okay and all sweepers do they push the odds more in your favor if you're looking to take a long position if you start seeing sweepers come into some consolidation, right? So in simple English, if a name goes sideways for two, three months, okay, and there's no sweeper activity whatsoever, you know, little drifts and drafts, nothing really going on. For me, if I'm looking to get along that name without any wise guy activity, I got basically a 50-50 shot whether that thing is going to head higher from consolidation or roll over and go lower I mean again for me the fundamentals you know looking at a company's numbers or earnings I couldn't find any value as a trader in that okay investors they find value in that as a trader I couldn't find any value in that technicals for me were very hit or you know I couldn't find any consistency just relying on technicals and again you know when when a name is consolidating like in other words when a name pulls back and then starts going sideways and chopping around you know, the, the technicals never gave me a heads up on anything you know it may hit a support and find the bottom but again for me it was hit or miss you know I know a lot of you out there um, it helps out huge and, and that's again everybody's different uh, but where I found that the biggest value in flow was, again, a you got a name going sideways, 50-50, up or down from that point. All of a sudden, I see aggressive sweepers come into that name, betting on forward move. Even if it bumped the odds now to 60-40, and in some situations, depending on how strong the action, the odds probably go up even more, as we all know. Um, there's my edge. That's my edge in this game. And I think that's how all of you um, who look at the flow uh, or have any intentions of utilizing the flow, how you should approach it. You know, Even if you're looking at technicals and using the flow as an indicator, it should ask, okay, the chart sets up, I'm getting the sweeper activity, that bumps the odds in my favor. That doesn't make it a lock. That doesn't make it a hundred percent certainty that that name's going higher. But you know, I grew up in a professional gambling back. You know, I mentioned to you guys, my father was a big time gambler. The whole environment around me as a kid was all gambling, from horse players to ball games to casinos. You name it. 
That's all I knew as a kid. And that's the same way they looked at it. You know, guys who gambled the ball games for a living, you know, when they saw that they had an edge in the in that line or in the odds or in the point spread, right? They didn't look at it as this game is fixed. Like that's a misconception. A lot of people think the wise guys who bet ball games for a living bet fixed games. That's not what's going on. They they are finding mistakes in the lines and I guess just increasing the odds in their favor. So at the end of the day, let's say for throughout the year, they hit at a 60% clip, which is terrific, or even high 50s, they know they can do this for a living, right? Because you can, with, when you have that confidence and you find something like that, you can always increase the bankroll. You always find a way to you up the bet. And as long as you manage your bankroll properly, if you can play bet ball games and hit at a high 50s, 60% clip, you're not going to work a day in your life. So that's that's the edge. And that's the edge in this. Is the, this is gambling. In my eyes, this is gambling. All right? Trading is gambling. You don't want to gamble. Put your money in some funds, dollar course, course of your life, and that's investing. Any other form of trading is gambling. You're gambling. So I just that's where you'll get the full value of flow when you when you put when you look at this game through those lenses, you know, and um, so be, that being said, what we're seeing underneath the hood in specific sectors, I think, is a good thing. Like a lot of people look at it and say, "Oh my God, the transportations are rolling over. That might be a sign of trouble." They've done that before, though. You know, they've done that before. Um, what's a good ETF? This is probably a good ETF to look at, the DJT or the IYT. Like, look, as hot as these things have been, there's been decent pullbacks along the way. I mean, there was a decent pullback before that strong push to highs. You know, so... That's where the opportunity is, and that's where I have trouble, you know, buying up here. Now, some of the tech names have continued higher without any pull, which is extraordinary. But for the most part, everything else has these little peaks and valleys that you should look to take advantage of if you're looking to play in any other groups, all right? And that's what's held this market up. They continue to rotate money, you know? They take money out of the trannies. They're putting it into energy, you know. They take money out of energy. They put it in financials. Financials got hot. Remember, everybody all of a sudden was super bullish. Everybody. Nobody wanted them. Then everybody wanted them. And now they're starting to run away from them again. So that's what continuously is happening, that rotation. And this market up. And until we see a day where they take everything down together, it's going to be hard for this market to have any sort of correction. You know, corrections usually, the real deal corrections, like a lot of you newer traders don't even know what a correction is. I'm not, I don't say that in a mean way. We haven't seen a real correction. I'm talking about real deal correction. A real deal correction, you have no hiding spot. You don't hide in Fang because Fang is getting beaten the shit out of. You know what I mean? There's no hiding. Everything rolls over. And until we see signs of them starting to do that, you know, it's going to be really, really difficult to get any sort of drawdown in this market. Now, the inevitable is it will come. There will be one day where it will come, obviously. Uh, but that's what's held this market up. So the point of the whole story is we get hung up as um, traders to focus only on the strength. And, you know, depending on what type of trader you are, you should be, right? If you're a shorter-term trader, um, you know, the, the strength is where you want to be because, you know, 
to buy something that hasn't done anything and have the patience to sit in it um, until it comes to life. But if you're a swing trader um, and you're looking to, you know, like we discussed, hold positions over the course of a month to months, you know, don't don't shy away from the weak stuff, especially the stuff that's been strong, just weak right now and quiet. You know, the trannies, the financials, because uh, that's where the opportunity may be for you, risk reward wise. All right, and that's what we're seeing. So eventually, they've done it with some high beta thing names, right? Tesla has gone through something like that. Uh, how you know how hot was Tesla? And now at a point where again. You hear all the negativity Tesla throughout all of this, but it really comes to a head when the price action's weak. When the price action's strong, they ignore all the weakness, all the uh, negativity. Okay, and uh, Netflix, which we saw some um, some nice buying come in Friday. You know, nothing major, but compared to some of the hot stuff out there, you know, a little quiet time. And again. You hear the negativity surface. Now all of a sudden, you know, Disney's going to put uh, Netflix out of business and shit like that. You always, you always, they're never, you're never going to hear super bullish news on a pullback. And if you do, that's a warning sign in itself. Okay, so you got to try to block out the noise. You focus on what you have been successful with again whether it's technicals and flow you know for me and a lot of people it's just flow and you try to block out all that stuff if you remember Amazon okay down here and that's why we were so interested when it caught the bazooka you know nobody was excited about Amazon anymore it's incredible every every day there were rumor news that they were buying another company taking over the world when it started you know, the stock was at highs. Everybody wanted to be long of it. And then all of a sudden, because of price action, you know, people started to get disinterested in Amazon. You know, a lot of traders get stuck. They can't make any money. Randomly buying spots, thinking it's just going to continue higher, and they get stuck. And then when they get fed up, you know, and coincidentally you see flow come in, that's where the opportunity is. All right, and again, it's not, you got to get certainty out of the equation. Like a lot of traders get into that habit of trying to feel certain about something. You can't, you can't play with that mind frame. You can't. Sometimes the harder it is to pull a trigger in the name, the better that trade turns out to be. So, um, with the market doing what it's doing, and now as we wind through the rest of earnings here, we still have some earnings to go, but the big the big players, I mean, next week is a big um, earnings week retail-wise. I know Home Depot, all that stuff. So we still some still some big names out there. Um, but little by little, the good thing is, even though the markets, the major indices, we're not seeing it, um, we're seeing some decent breathers, you know, across the board. All right, and then post earnings flow will dictate of what they may push into the end of the year. Maybe everything. Who knows? You know. All right, so that's um, for the week as far as the the overall market. That's the way I'm looking at things. Um, as far as sentiment, you guys know, uh, I look at sentiment really closely. Um, when I tie it together with flow, uh, it has been a deadly combination, um, and sentiment over the short term has really moved around and that's been the case for a while okay we just had an a bullish extreme reading and then we had this little washout here and that washed out a lot of the bulls so sentiment wise outside of tech is okay tech is the one thing right now that's a bit frothy on, on the uh, on the bullish side Again, for um, it, and it could stay there. It has been there, um, but the problem is you got to again look at it on a risk reward basis, depending on how long you want to hold these things. All right, and also you know I want to make the point as far as sentiment is concerned. 
this market's tricky because you can't take just overall sentiment and apply it to everything. You know, for example, like the, some of the tech names and specific tech sec, uh, sectors like the semis have been, you know, scorching. So sentiment's going to be extremely bullish there, obviously. But then you have other groups like biotech and um, the transportation sector and other things that, you know, obviously they're not at extreme bullish territory. So you got to be careful getting wrapped up in um, overall sentiment and trying to apply that into individual names because uh, you could get into trouble doing that. I've seen a lot of traders do that. Um, you know, it just gives you an overall gauge on the market. So right now in simple English, what I'm seeing is anything outside of tech looks good as far as on the sentiment side. Okay? Tech is a little too bullish for my liking. Um, other than that, you know, we're not seeing any euphoria. You know, you hear people saying, a la 1999, euphoria. If this was a la 1999, Tesla would be trading at $3,000. Nowhere near it. Yeah, you got little um, crazy blips of bubble signs like this OSTK and shit like that. But when when you get in the state of euphoria in, in the marketplace, you have a gazillion things that look like that. All right, so again, just another testament to block out the noise you're hearing out there. Um, everything outside of tech on the sentiment side actually is closer to buy signals than any cautionary signals. All right, I got a couple of names here we'll go through um, this past week that caught some decent action, and then uh, we'll run through quickly sectors. Uh, let's start off with this bad boy, Micron. You, we've been talking about this every week. Uh, just when you think it can't get any crazier flow-wise, it just non-stop, guys, non-stop. Let me blow this up so you guys can see. So for last week, um, we spoke about what I named the David Tepper sweepers, those deep-in-the-money sweepers that uh, we saw earlier in the year. They showed up. And leaps, okay, and Jan calls, and this week, the flow again, every day, there's decent sweeper activity in this name, every day, up, down, sideways, crooked, if the stock's down, they make, they make it their business to buy this thing, and Friday, the flow just ballooned again, you had some huge spreads go off, uh, you know, I'm not a big spread guy, so that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, but then we had more leaps, more jans, and then an April bull missile later in the afternoon. Um, let me get that bet for you here. Oh, I got a glare from the sun. I got to shut those blinds. So here's the micron action. I hope you guys can see that. All right, and let me shut the blinds. I can't see it. All right, so you can see. I mean, this flow we've been talking about it every week. It's just it's getting stupid at this point. Um, but this was the bet right here. Late in the afternoon. Oh, no, right on top. I'm sorry. Hold on. But I want to do this right here. So you had the two here combined, the same player. So you see them here? Right here, the April guys. So further out, again, next year, April 46 calls, and basically it was close to, if not like 2 million bucks. Missiles, absolute missiles. And, you know, the day before that, and you can see the rest of the action, you know, leaps again. That's uh, Jan 2019. That's a little uh, quirk in the board we have there. Um, but you can see the leaps also they added to there. And then, let me get down here. You can see the day before that, well, 11.7, you know, look at all these leaps. Look at this. 
look at two million, two million, two and a half million, two and a half million, one and a half, three million. You know, and these these are real guys here. These aren't your little Pepsi Cola racketeer speculators out there. These are guys deep, 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 deep in the money. You know, you're looking to utilize some leverage um, in the option market, and we've been seeing this time and time again in this name. Um, the David Tepper sweeper, for the most part, is that 22 strike. Um, and I think that's a great number. Again, I don't know for sure if it's him. Um, I just named him that. Uh, but he started when the stock was in the 20s, and he was hitting the 22s. So basically, um, you know, what were they, April 22s, and then next month the May 22s, and then the June 22s, and then the July 22s, and then the August 22s. So the stock was 20, but now up in the 40s, he's still hitting the 22s. And opening action, all opening action. So, it, you know, as we spoke about, it gets tricky in a name like this because we have all this action, right? I mean, this is the stock of the year as far as overall action is concerned. There's no contest. And you have already an incredible rally from where the action has started. There's been nonstop action, so it's not like this thing even takes a little bit of a breather like this consolidation, this consolidation, you guys remember we were doing webinars. For me, I like it when the flow goes dead. And then if I see them start up again, boom, there's your entry. Okay, it's crystal clear. The problem with Micron is they never slow down. They never stop. They were buying every little dip they can. They couldn't care up, down, sideways, crooked. They just continued to buy it. So if you remember, we, uh, we were talking about the only way to try to take advantage of that is to maybe average in, right? Buy a little. If it comes in, you see some more action, buy a little more. Don't put on a full position at one spot because you don't know where that quality spot is. And make sure you have enough time on the option side. I mean, that's the most important thing because unlike where the flow goes dead and then picks up, that helps drastically on the timing. When the flow just continues, you really don't have an idea of when that turnaround is going to take place. So you have to make sure you have enough time, especially if you're looking to catch this type of move out of that. You know, and I think the flow that we, we saw last week tells us two things. One, if you're looking to play off the momentum over the short term, you could do that. Okay, the flow has been strong enough. I wouldn't get too greedy as far as that concerned. Okay, you're playing off the short-term momentum. You're looking for just a trade off the juice. And the flow is telling us that whatever, or I mean, it's probably a bunch of institutions at this point, but whatever buying into this thing, these guys aren't going anywhere. They're looking to stick with this name and be in this long time all right and that doesn't mean we can't get one of these again we could easily have one of these it wouldn't shock me at all if you know we top out and end up in some sort of consolidation the flow wouldn't be wrong you know and look at the flow we're seeing we're seeing April right leaps we're seeing some other short-term action around it that's why I'm saying you can play off the momentum but the missiles are all coming further All right, so it's a name, I don't think no matter what type of weakness or negativity as far as news, I think this is a name you got to have on your screen at all times. It's into weakness because uh, when you see this type of action, um, it will get supported. As we've been seeing, we, we've been saying that for a while. I think the, the flow that we saw this week just solidifies that that, th that will be the case for the foreseeable future in this thing. All right, so we had Micron um, was the talk of the end of the week. Um, Netflix, uh, a lot of people were 
looking at that. We've been looking for Netflix, decent action in Netflix for quite a bit. We haven't really seen any quality there since I think back around here or maybe even here. Even as this thing was going, pushing to highs, you know, a lot of us expected sweepers to press. You know, we see that flow just explode. Uh, we saw it in several times. Uh, you know, you see it in several names. Baba, it didn't do that. We It disappeared. It just totally disappeared. You know, you saw these little small weekly players and shit like that. Nothing, uh, nothing that really got us excited. Um, so we've been looking for some quality to come into Netflix for quite a bit in Netflix time frame wise, okay? And, you know, uh, some players were getting a little concerned here that maybe, you know, the smart money has given up on this thing. Now, those of us who know or have been in the steam room over the past two years know that every time this thing looks at its worst, that's when sweepers usually come in, okay? A lot of times they've been early, meaning they'll come in, I'll get a nice bounce off the momentum, the action generated, but then there'll be some selling again. You know, sometimes the first batch would be underwater for a little bit, but ultimately it was a quality spot to start looking at this name. All right, and we that was the start of it uh, Friday. Um, so it's a real nice action. I like the Jan action, the Jan sweepers that came in. Uh, there was December sweepers as well. There was also a huge call spread. Um, I've heard a couple things about the call spread. Some people telling me it was just a clean call spread. Somebody telling me it was an adjustment off an existing spread uh, that makes that combo even more bullish. Uh, we'll see. You know, I'll see if I hear any more on that. But sweepers were enough. Like the sweepers are what got my attention, and. Um, if you want to be on the safe side, Jans are the way. If you're looking for a bigger move than just a trade, yeah, you know, a lot of us day traded the name, had really nice juice um, in a dead market on Friday. Let's see, where is it? And then stalled that. You could see the action came in over here, and then just, you know, you could see the momentum took it higher. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, as they usually do, so. And market, you see it breathe. Sometimes they'll keep going if the market is. Uh, but that was the reaction. Oops. That was the reaction off of it, and it's pretty obvious, right? All right. So Netflix um, is worth an eye. Netflix is worth an eye. Another thing I would mention. I again, knowing that they have been early in the past is important, so you don't get um, wrapped up in a tizzy just in case you see some more weakness there. Uh, but also, they tend to come back. In other words, they don't just hit it and then disappear. You know, usually it's the start of more buying to come in. Okay, maybe a couple of days, maybe in a week, depending on what the stock does. You know, if the stock you know, pushes a little higher, let's say early in the week, and then starts to breathe again, that would be a point where they come in. All right, so that's something else um, to keep an eye on. Uh, usually they're committed and they can add to positions um, when you see that type of flow. All right, so that, that, that was the type of flow we were looking for um, in the name, as we mentioned several webinars back. You know, even last week, you guys remember, um, I told you Netflix was a name that I really wanted to see some action in, uh, some legitimate action. And we finally got it uh, at a nice spot. So, you know, like Tesla, for example. I just want to make the example. You know, Tesla, we saw some sweepers in Tesla Friday. You know, small spec spec action. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. You know, now te Tesla's not going to see the type, well, it's possible, but usually won't see the type of action that a Netflix would. Definitely wouldn't see action that a Micron at this point would or an Apple, but it's pretty obvious when they want Tesla. If you guys remember, remember that one pre-earnings bet? 
like that would qualify as a bet for Tesla. Let's see. Hold on. So where is it? No, it was after the put buying. Yeah. Oh, here it is. So, but look, you know, here's again the difference between pre-earnings. Oops, what did I do? Hold on. I moved it there. So you had earnings, right? We were talking about that. You had this bet here, which I mean was a good looking order, right? Sweep, decent money, nice looking sweep. Okay, that was on 1026. Look at the day before. You know, that's that's just earnings though. It's earnings positioning. Yeah, then quarter oh those expired, 1027. All right, so that 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 call bet right there. Something similar. It doesn't even have to be that big. Similar to that in Tesla. Or a series of smaller sweeps would be even better. Forget the one order, even better. We haven't. And and here's another thing too, guys. You know, you're not gonna what I get lost on these things. You're not gonna be able, you're not gonna have the eye for sweeper activity like myself or others who have been watching this type of action for ages now you know you're not expected to you know you're expected to have an open mind and you're expected to learn of some of the points myself and others make regarding sweeper activity and the more you see the more you develop an eye for it you know by listening to certain points certain characteristics i point out um over time you know, not a lot of time either. But moral of the story is we haven't seen it in Tesla yet, some spec action, uh, but nothing more than that. All right. Uh, day before that, we saw um, aggressive activity in this name. And the reason why it stuck out was the action that day was awful as a whole. Uh, but this buff caught some nice action this week uh, right here. You know, nice little pullback, caught a sweep. Actually traded higher on Friday. Um, had a half decent move. Um, CMG looked good this week. See, it still didn't even really get off that high. They that had a good looking sweep. Yeah, you know, we haven't seen any more action um, in it since. It doesn't really catch action at all. Uh, but could a really good looking sweeper? Trust me, I wouldn't. Put the word "good looking" next to that sweep in this name, if it was, you know, if it wasn't good looking. But sweep at a really tough spot to look to buy this thing as she was making lows. Um, actually, had a nice move a couple days later, and you know, sort of, and maybe she's heading out of this. Possible, we could see some further action come in. I doubt it because it's rare. You know, that's what made that order stick out, too. This name sweepers. It doesn't catch sweepers like that. Um, what else? CMCSA, big time leap buying in this name. So for you out there, had some shorter term activity around it, uh, but the quality was in the 2019 calls. Um, and this thing looked pretty awful. You know, still looks pretty awful. Uh, but somebody feels that this is a decent spot to at least on a longer term horizon um, be interested. So that showed some life this week. Uh, this name got caught in the tranny pull, and it becomes interesting to see how this will play out. Uh, Ryder, the, the action that really stood out was there was put selling in the name. Also, December calls, okay, which open up the largest position of open interest. Now, pretty noteworthy bet. Looked okay when the action came in, and then the trannies rolled over this week. So, obviously, this got caught in the rollover with it. Um, but this is, I bring this up because I get a lot of questions, you know, based off the action, it was good looking action. Is this something you average down in or, um, you know, in other words, how do you navigate a trade like this? Here's a perfect example of how, um, you know, I've been telling you guys the best approach, in my opinion, if you're swing trading, 
on the option front is to put in what you're willing to lose as far as premium and that's your stop loss. This is a perfect example. Okay? Because what do you what do you do here? You you could stop yourself out, but don't be surprised come December or something. You know, look at that CAVM. Remember the CAVM? Yeah, that didn't look too hot before it caught news. So with the market where it is up here, if you're swing trading call side, I think you know, utilizing that strategy is the best approach right now. It keeps you lighter position-wise than you would normally be. That's always a good thing when we've run so far. And so out. So in other words, if writer expires worthless, it's a loser, right? And that's it. And that's the way you should look at it anyway, regardless of the action. That's my point is that no matter what the activity may be, if a market rolls over, if a sector rolls over, there's, I mean, there's losers. There are going to be losers. There's nothing you can do about it. This is losing right now, uh, and she's not a loser till you know, the third week of December. Uh, but she needs a, a small Jesus miracle at this point. But, you know, these things come roaring back. We've seen it time and time again. You know, they flush him and come roaring back. I remember the last time it caught action, this looks a little bit worse, but something similar. It was this consolidation here. You know, the stock had a little pop, and then boop, they flushed them out. And then a little rally again, flush, a little rally again, flush, and then just got loose. So she's going to need to do this uh, for these guys to get paid. But we'll see. We'll see. But I wanted to bring up, uh, you know, a stock that's been a, a disappointment this week, uh, and that's definitely the writer. Uh, what else we have? Twitter. I don't even know why I'm talking about this thing, but she's looking a little different these days. I mean, it's, I'm not going to get too excited about it, but uh, as a lot of you know who are members, I have a position in Twitter, unfortunately, um, at higher levels in my daughter's account that I, my approach was to tuck it away. That's how good of a stock picker I am. Um, but I did, I do have Facebook, which is doing quite well. Uh, but that's my position in Twitter longer term, so I'm forced to look at this thing every day. The flow has looked different. The flow has looked different. Pre-earnings, but again, it could have been earnings related, so you don't want to make too much out of it. Then you get the earnings pop, and there's buying into this little pullback breather. Um, and I think that's a little telling. You know, usually what we'll see is Twitter catch buying when the stock is moving higher, but when as soon as there's some weakness, it dries up and disappears. There's some buying in Twitter. You know, nothing crazy, but there's some bullish activity in Twitter. Uh, we saw some Jan buying, a little December buying. I think Jan's were the main focus um, on what you would call it, Friday and late last week. Uh, but there was buying all week, all week. Uh, and off a breather. So, you know, if you like Twitter, uh, what else we got? And then, uh, we got to talk about this name. OSTK, probably the trade of the year of sweeper activity. You know, Micron is gets the crown for best overall activity, not even close. Uh, but this OSTK, definitely the trade of the year. This thing started with sweepers. I don't even want to tell you where they started. Um, we had no idea what was going on. Then we thought we had an idea what was going on. They continued to sweep in bigger size, more velocity. And then into, okay, a couple days into earnings, they start sweeping November 60s. And then the next day, November 65s. And I'm like, oh, what are these guys doing? You know, as the stock was breaking 40, uh, and then this thing went crazy off numbers. Even as Bitcoin is getting hit over the head. So, yeah, I, outside of that, 
I got nothing more to share about this particular name. Now, old news, a couple guys took a shot into earnings lottos. They played nice and small. They made a little money. That's fantastic. Uh, but up here now, hard to get an edge off any sweeper activity. The only thing you may be able to do is if there's some weakness and you see some sweeper activity, you may get a, tr a decent bounce out of it. Uh, but, you know, risk-reward-wise up here like this is ridiculous. All right, but we, we couldn't do this webinar without talking about that name. And I'm talking about legitimate action in this name, guys. I'm talking about big, big action for this name. I didn't even know this name existed before the sweepers hit it. You know, that that's the type of action um, we saw come in. I think I showed you guys last week. Wait. Oop. Let me see if I can go back. Maybe if I do this further, let me see. Oh, yeah, I probably could. Um, so you can see July as a teenager, you know? And you can see it started off small, right? $18,000, $80,000 sweep. I remember this December sweep was a big deal. This was a big deal. Uh, it was this and another small sweep. It was about hundred and fifty grand total, which was a noteworthy bet. December 22 and a half is when the stock was 18. And then a month later, they come in, and you can see the even the amounts are getting bigger here and more sweeps. These are a lot of them didn't even hit the board because they were small lots. This is what hit the board. Then you had this guy, four hundred thousand. You know what I mean? You can see the look at the amounts here, just ballooning. And this was thirty-seven, thirty-eight dollars in October, the December thirties and forties, bang bang. So legitimate action. Not, you know, I'm not making the case like uh, some guys I know out there. There's one little call buyer in the name, and they say, "You see, somebody always knows." You see, it drives me nuts. Uh, what else? ZTO. That's been a nice one. A couple members, several members owned it, traded it, left a runner. Looking good up here. Tough to do anything with. You know, they started off this um, consolidation, hit it twice, Jan and April's, and, you know, from 15 to 18, that's a nice move already. Uh, so I wouldn't be fooling around up here. Uh, if you're leaving runners, that's great, but I wouldn't uh, be looking to buy this thing unless we get some sort of breather and they come in and do OSTK. You know, that's the only thing um, that would pique my interest again. Otherwise, you know, the egg is hatched. And um, this one is a little pain in the ass, this Roku. You know why this is a pain in the ass? They was some legitimate sweeper activity that came into this name. Now, nothing jaw-dropping, but legitimate sweeper activity that came into the name. Um, I day traded it twice. There were two days of action. Um, a couple, you know, several members actually day traded it, even took it for a swing and took a loss on it. Because um, those calls expired. They were some weeklies and some November monthlies. Okay? And then earnings, out of all things. Earnings in this pig. And look what happened. And ironically, there was pre-earnings action. One guy in particular, right before the bell, should be put away in prison for ages. Because he came in at 359 and didn't give anybody an opportunity to even think about rolling the dice. So, yeah, that thing exploded. That was kind of a frustrating name because, uh, like I said, there was action in it that they happened to be a little early on. And then the November. So unless you were in Novembers and held through earnings, which a lot of people do, you would have got you would have got screwed on this thing. So that's a that's a bastard. That's the difference. Right there. Um, and the action that it expired worthless, what happened was there was a series of upgrades as they normally do in these IPOs. You know, whoever did the underwriting comes out and puts upgrades on it. The stock had a little pop and they sold right into it and then just rolled over completely. Over. 
uh, and then this happened. So that was a little frustrating. All right, and let's say what else? There's names like um, Splunk uh, that have seen nice action, real nice action that has earnings coming. You can see the E right here on the bottom of the screen. Estimate 14 cents on 11.16. So you got earnings coming. So again, the play there, even though the action was legit, it was good looking sweeper activity. The play is if you played it to take some risk off into the number, and you know, if you choose to leave a runner, leave a piece, that's up to you. I know you see the Roku, you see the OSTK, and you say to yourself, oh my, how do you sell? Uh, not hold into earnings. I'm just telling you from my experience, you know, it's it's hit or miss. It's hit or miss. A lot more loses in you know off earnings with flow, and you got to understand this thing has moved. You know, it moved off the initial action. So if you want to leave a piece, that's fine. I know a couple of you guys are in it, and it's been nice. But um, if you hold the whole position and it goes to zero. Shit the bet on earnings, it's on you. All right, so that's been another uh, nice one here. Uh, quickly, let's run through sectors quickly, all right, because I want to get to that, and then we could go to Friday's action because there was a couple decent names that caught some action Friday. All right, let's start off in uh, – all right, let's go quickly. The small cap like biotech, you got – again, this is not – these are not buy recommendations by no means. This is not activity that just took place here. So they're not all at buy levels. I'm just giving you names in sectors that have caught the best flow, in my opinion. Okay? So in other words, like, for example, in that data storage chip where DRAM would be a micron, obviously. Okay? So that would be an example of a... So you got like biotech, you know, GBT, uh, caught those March buyers, had a really nice move. Um, a lot of us traded it, left some March calls as a runner, really big move this week. That's one that caught some real nice action. This HZMP, that's uh, been choppy. Uh, that also is a small cap biotech, caught some nice action. This name has been a complete animal, Juno and continues to see action. Um, of course, some action Friday again. This thing turned out to be really nice. Uh, Juno, by the way, they were, the best sweeper activity, if I remember correctly, came the day into a secondary. In other words, there was two really good-looking sweepers, and they announced a secondary at the belt. So a lot of us were like, what? They swept it into a secondary? Make a long story short, that secondary... I can't even find it on the chart. Where is it? Here? I don't even know where the hell it is. So it goes to show you that, again, the flow for me overlaps any other shit going out there. If they're sweeping into a secondary, they're sweeping into secondary for a reason. How about Micron? Remember they swept into that secondary? That was the best thing that happened to Micron, that secondary. All right, so you got Juno, GBT, HZMP, uh, the three, in my opinion, that have seen the best activity in small cap biotech. Um, energy has, the individual name action hasn't been, the quality hasn't been there. There's been flow, but the quality hasn't been there. Uh, PXD is my favorite, uh, as most of you know already. This move here caught some, it actually started into this weakness, what I like the best. They were buying November, Decembers, um, and then they started sweeping leaps into this move, okay? Then you had a breather here. There was still some leap buying and a little more. So PXD, in my opinion, the best of it in the energy space. Um, also, there were names uh, of recent, like a Schlumberger which caught some heavy activity, had a day of a pullback there, hasn't really much moved much. Uh, but again, CNQ is another one. Uh, you can see that's started to move here recently. Uh, they, they, they hit this thing early, actually traded lower after they hit it, 
really got moving here. Uh, that cop has had some nice action throughout. A lot of these names have been hot, though. A lot of them. Um, an interesting name, a uh, little name, the CVE, which a lot of you know, uh, they had action, they came aggressively, they got run over, and this thing has come back from the dead. Some interesting leap activity, which I found interesting. Uh, so somebody willing to commit to this thing, thinking the worst may be over. Uh, that seemed a little bit interesting. All right, but uh, again, the energy space, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking for more. What I saw in PXD, I want to see in more stuff. All right, that's basically what I'm trying to, uh, maybe that's still to come. Um, transportation, a lot of the trucking names have seen nice action over the past several months. Uh, they're, they have been weak, so somewhere to look if you're interested in the group. XPO. Okay, X-Ray Peter Oscar, that's one. Uh, there was some more action this past week. This has held up well compared to some of the others. This thing didn't even pull back. Uh, J.B. Hunt, this had a little bit of a pullback. You can see some choppy consolidation here. That saw some nice action over the past couple of months. C-H-R-W, um, this thing too. Look at this, no pullback there. This was some of uh, more recent action. And that rider, which they've been leaning on. All right, so though I think they're all truckers, what I just mentioned to you. Uh, they have caught the best action in the tranny sector. Um, as far as rails are concerned, CSX caught some action um, over here. Had a little bit of a pop back down to where she started. Um, but that has been recent, you know. I wouldn't put it into the category of the names I just mentioned. Uh, the trucking space has been where the wise guy sweepers have lived um, throughout the last couple months as far as transportation are concerned. Uh, tech, let's go to some of the best names tech. Well, we know Micron, right? Uh, Avgo finally hatched. And again, you know, here's an example. They were swinging a heavy bat at the bottom of this consolidation, right? We spoke about that numerous times. Primarily November, only December calls, okay? So she finally got out uh, thanks to the Qualcomm news or whatever the case. Um, another name in that category, in my opinion, WD and a court action Friday. This thing was a rocket on really good looking flow since the election okay then that Toshiba news has been hanging over its head and flow kind of dried up in this consolidation but if you remember a really good looking April sweeper not too long ago and Friday um, caught some nice action let me get to that I'll show you while I'm doing this let me go to this in my uh, here it is. So this guy here, beep, November twenty fourth, ninety two dollar calls, eighty seven cents, and you got a December sweeper. So they hit it twice. Um, I actually tried day trading this and took a small loss. Uh, on Friday, this came into strength though, so it was kind of a pain in the ass. You know, it didn't really do much, hung around there a little bit, uh, but I was hoping to get a little more of a move out of it, and then it fell in my face. Uh, but not a bad spot, okay? Even better spot maybe if there's some weakness early next week. You know what I mean? But not a bad spot. Again, this is all consolidation right here, in my opinion. This is breather off this big move similar to Avgo. And interestingly enough, right, Micron is in that group, uh, WDC, and then this STX, which has seen better flow. Okay, this is another one. STX, we were hoping for weakness off earnings because uh, we would have looked at it as an opportunity, especially if any flow came into that weakness. 
uh, but it had a gap up. They were buying little by little throughout this whole little grind high higher into earnings. Um, but interestingly, okay, that's what makes it look a little bit different. Interesting leap action. So we'll see. Uh, caught some smaller action this past week. Uh, we'll see if they come out, you know, hot and heavy here. Uh, so the WDC, the MU, and STX, which are all in the same group, aren't they? Uh, we spoke about Avgo. Yeah, that's pretty much. I mean, a lot of the other names have just gone nuts. You know what I mean? They've gone nuts. I'm, I was trying to look at some of the smaller names. Uh, that CAVM was one. She's gone. Um, you remember Adobe was one. She's gone. All these things are, are gone. What's that ADSK? I haven't looked at that. Uh, that was another one. She's pretty much gone. Top three in the tech group. What else we got? Uh, casinos. Uh, they've been hot. Uh, some of them too hot. So you might want to, again, these are names that if you're a technical guy, Elliott Waves guy, or anything else, um, like a lot of traders are, who are members are, you want to watch these names. These are the names you want to watch that have caught the best action and apply your skills to them. Okay? They're not all at buy point. Uh, so we got casinos from the win that just has incredible action. Uh, she's the head honcho there. Okay? Then you got um, LVS that in action. That was a nice trade. Had a nice move out of, uh, you know, she was a little, she was lagging compared to the win, and she got out. Um, and then you have even, I guess you could say the smaller ones, Boyd, B-Y-D, had some nice action, grinded higher. Um, Mel, the old MPL, M-L-C-O. Some decent action there. They all look strong. They've been incredible. You know, another name, Caesars, CZR, um, has seen some action. A lot of the blocks tied, though. You can see some massive volume here. So a lot of stock replacement is what I think it is. So I don't want to throw it in with the rest of them yet until I see some cleaner action there. All right, MGM. Seeing a little bit of action, but nothing like the other ones. MGM caught some uh, flow Friday, uh, but nothing like the other three. You got Win, LVS, Boyd. Those are the main guys there. Uh, the old uh, MPL, MLCO as well. Uh, what else do I got here? Media, the beaten down media names. Comcast. I would uh, that would be the go-to name there. Uh, yeah, you see some other stuff like Viacom and, and stuff like that, uh, but I CMCSA is the one, I think, in my opinion, if you're looking at the group uh, with the best action there. Uh, you know, banks, banks have been, let's, let's go one by one. The only bank that caught action that was noteworthy of recent is this Wells Fargo. Uh, let's see, I gotta go to this with some time behind it. This one here. Let me uh, do this. So that was a couple of days ago. So you can see million dollar sweeper. September of next year, so a lot of time. All right, and you can see he laid some big wood here. He played the 52 and a halves when the stock was 53 and change. All right, so that's a good looking bet there with some time. Now, again, don't let the time shy you away if you're that type of player. You know what I mean? If you're an equities guy or your swing trader looking for to build position over months. We spoke about this a couple webinars back. Uh, a lot of the action with time behind it has really done well. And the reason why is, guys, if you're looking for big moves, you know, I sound like a broken record, but you want time. You want, to, you want time on your side. 
this was the action, initial action in Wells Fargo. Um, if you were here in past webinars, you would remember. Okay, so that came at 49 and change back in September. These were June calls. Oh, I'm sorry, 55, not 49, 55. What? No, 49. They played the 55s. They played the June 55s back in September. And you can see, you know, two missiles. All right, so Wells Fargo has seen um, some really nice buying when the stock is weak. Uh, with some time behind it. Hold on, let me get to this. And here recently, which makes it interesting. So the first, the first sweepers that I pointed out, they came into this. And she took off, so you didn't even need the time. But here they just hit April's right into these lows here. All right. Uh, other banks, City, the last good-looking action in City was a March deep-in-the-money call buyer, call sweeper. Uh, that was the last good-looking bet. You know, City has caught a ton of action. Uh, City continues to catch bull flow, so City is one of the banks you want to keep an eye on. Nothing noteworthy into this poll yet, just some bullish flow, all right, but always worth keeping an eye on City because some ridiculous action back here. Um, J.P. Morgan, of course, and the Bank of America always catches action. So the main ones there, Morgan Stanley too, uh, but Morgan Stanley caught uh, some shorter term flow and you know had a nice move. So we'll see if they come into any Morgan Stanley on uh, this. All right. So that's what I'm looking for. The banks, I'm looking for some standout flow on this pull. That's what I'm waiting for. Okay. The flow didn't necessarily really dry up either yet, which kind of sucks. But any good-looking action uh, probably would be a nice spot of entry if you're looking uh, for a spot into this pull. Uh, Goldman, a lot of spec action. The only Goldman action that was noteworthy was Jan buying, but that was back here. All right, so we'll see if, you know, Goldman could catch a missile from time to time, so it's possible. All right, but the banks are always on watch. Right now they're on watch. Nice breather, consolidation. They all needed to breathe. Like, look at, um, where is that? Let's see, Bank of America. Yeah, you know, they, look, up here they just, they were too hot. You know what I mean? They got too hot, and now you're getting a little bit of a breather here. They're lining up nice. So any decent look. See into here if you're eyeing the banks. I think you got your uh, your confirmation. You got your confirmation. Uh, so those are the banks. Steel, uh, not too much. I mean, you got U.S. Steel usually the one that catches the action when they catch it. Uh, MT is another name that has seen uh, flow. You know, AKS from time to t time to time we'll see uh, some cheaper activity, but nothing. You know, U.S. Steel is the big guy there, flow-wise. Uh, any sectors I left out? Hotels, uh, Marriott. You know, you had action in some other hotels. It's been a hot group, um, but Marriott, us there. I, I don't think there's much of a comparison. You know, we we had the ILG which is going to get bought out at some point in time. Oh, that pulled off earnings. I didn't even see that. Uh, the ILG has had, you know, a ton of action the whole trip. Uh, there's buyout speculation there. Uh, what else? Win. I haven't seen action in this name in a bit, uh, but had action back in the day. I would... Marriott is the one as far as the best action in the group. All right, what groups What groups did I leave out here? Oh, a couple of them. Home Builders, 
DHI takes the crown. Look at this animal of a stock. So DHI, you had leaps, spec sweepers, put sellers, name it, they've been there. All in DHI. Problem is, you don't get a dip in the stock. No such thing as a dip in the stock. Impossible. I don't know. What do you do up here? I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, Lenore, some recent action there. Also leaps. So that's a close second. Yeah, DHI takes the cake, but Lenore, close second. And then you got Pulte, which caught some leaps, um, but not as much action as the other two. So you got DHR, Lenore, Pulte, or as the home builders, the big guys, I guess, right? But DHI has been a uh, DHI is a DHR. DHI has been the beast. Uh, then we got those uh, pay processing, whatever the hell you want to call them, uh, the PayPal catch a sweeper activity every single day. Put sellers, again, no pullback, just incredible action. Uh, Square, uh, I don't know what to say about that anymore. Animal, catching action, both PayPal and Square, up until the closing bell Friday. Uh, PayPal, they're buying, they were buying Junes uh, pretty aggressively in PayPal. Uh, Square, a whole bunch of different things. And there's been put selling in both. Uh, Square caught some recent put selling. Um, I think it was into this weakness right here. And PayPal is very similar. One day of weakness and put, put sellers were tattooing bids. I don't know. I can't even find it on the chart. Maybe it was here. August? No. Maybe it was here. It was. I remember one day of weakness. This was earnings. I don't know. I can't even find it because it's impossible to find much weakness on this chart. You got some real animals out there, though. Uh, the gambling group, also a hot group. SGMS, the top name in that group. Uh, again, killer run, nonstop activity. Um, Impressive activity, leaps, everything. You know, you had the big move, pause, they came back after it, new highs. Pull here, if you guys remember. A little more action, nothing huge, but a little more action there. And back to highs again, had earnings. So uh, then you got some little guys. IGT has earnings coming. Looks good. You got her. So we'll see how she looks post earnings. Uh, but really nice action in that name as well. Uh, some smaller names, P and K. You know, nowhere near the SGMS and IGT uh, as far as quality or quantity. Uh, but P and K that doesn't see much action has seen some uh, decent sweepers. Yeah, that's another hot name. Look at these things. And the pen uh, had some action, but quiet down recently. Uh, maybe for good reason, this thing hasn't stopped. So you can see on the chart, look at these things. You know, so again, that's my point when, you know, you're looking for groups. Yeah, I, like I know a guy who's a big IBD guy. He swears by that philosophy that uses um, the IBD sector things and looks at you know, flow as far as the top names flow in those sectors, and that's a strategy. Um, there's several ways to take advantage of it, uh, but usually the names with the best flow, uh, you know, are the beast. Uh, the problem is trying to find an. You not, you know, the PayPal's. I mean, you can ask people in the room. You know, we see PayPal action all day, every day. You know, the problem, where, where's the entry on this? You know, as soon as you get a dip, like, look, you got a little dip here, right? That didn't last long. They closed it green that day. 
you know, you got a little dip here that was into earnings. I remember I was like, okay, I honestly, there's got to be some profit taking on earnings. There's got to be. And then we can start looking at this PayPal again for a decent entry. Nope, gap up. Yeah, and the same thing with the square. You know, you had a little bit, a little better because you had a little pause. Um, but if you guys remember, they were loading up on those Jans. Remember how many Jan calls these guys bought? You know, so that's been the that's been the biggest issue. I kid you not. That's why when you see when I see groups pause like the banks and the trannies and stuff like that and buy. That's a good thing because a lot of these things they don't give you that opportunity. Um, and that's it as far as what I got here. Any sectors um, that I may have missed, uh, subsectors, anything like that, you guys may be interested in. Uh, but yeah, biotech. I mentioned. Oh, you know what? Big, big biotech. I guess we could uh, label it. Uh, so in other words, that would be uh, Bristol Myers uh, that caught some March action. Bristol Myers would be top of the heap there. Um, ABBV, ton of action in that name. Ton of action in that name. Um, Celgene caught a bet. So a recent bet, March calls. But other than that, there hasn't been much action in Celgene. Uh, you know, the, the purpose of this is I'm trying to give you the, the names that have caught the best overall activity. Uh, so, again, you have Bristol Myers, ABBV. Those are names they seem to just keep uh, after, um, especially when there's weakness. Uh, somebody mentioned precious metals. Yeah, you know, I, we were talking about that on Friday that there hasn't been much of it. Like, for example, this silver wheat, and usually when there's any flow in those little miners, this would catch the activity, silver wheat. And, um, a name that used to catch a ton of flow, ABX, we haven't, has been quiet and look at it. Maybe that's the reason why. You know, so precious metals, there hasn't been a lot of it. Off the top of my head, WPM is probably the only name where I'll see action from time to time. Like we used to see action in Newmont. We actually saw some put buying in Newmont recently. You know, so maybe if you have any name in particular you throw at me, maybe it'll uh, ring a bell, but I haven't seen uh, much at all there. Um, you know, Freeport, uh, that's had some flow. But Freeport always catches action. You know, it's hard for me to get uh, too excited about that. You know, Freeport, uh, names like Vail. You know, when they get hot, um, that those two would be names they come after. Uh, but like I said, Freeport always catches activity. Uh, we saw a little action in names like this Tech, T-E-C-K, but nothing too crazy. Uh, stuff like that. Yeah, Jan Danks, uh, a name that came, what, what, I don't know what sector that would go into. What the hell? <laughs> what the internet? Uh, but Jan Danks is a name that seems to always catch action. Whatever sector you want to put that in. Uh, court action Thursday, well, they rolled down strikes, basically, uh, Thursday. So in other words, uh, they had calls that were further out of the money. They sold those, and they they antied up to get a higher delta. So it wasn't really a clean bet, but this name always seems to catch action, Yandex, always. Uh, a choppy pain in the ass, without a doubt, but always seems to catch action. Yeah, so uh, we'll throw it in the Russian Internet sector, Jim, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, definitely a name that catches uh, action. One of their favorites, um, you know, you got cruise lines. Uh, those you, the usual there. CCL, they've been weak, by the way. Uh, CCL caught a smaller sweep Friday. Um, I day traded it, but you know, 
swing worthy, I guess if you like it, otherwise I'd wait for more. It was a small sweep. Uh, NCLH, that's a name when they play those cruise lines they come after. So basically I would say those two, Royal Caribbean used to catch a lot of action, um, less so now for some reason. But earlier in the year, post-election, uh, that was their go-to. So those are the three, Royal Caribbean, CCL, NCLH. I don't know if there's any other anyway. So when they play them, they play uh, usually the Norwegian catches the best. All right, so uh, like I said, if you have any sectors, throw at me. Otherwise, we uh, let me take some of your names or questions on some of the stocks uh, you may be interested in. Uh, and we'll see. Is I guess a, a decent sector, um, but you know you got the Baba JD. They always seem to catch activity. JD now with earnings, seeing action. Um, you know we see action ZTO. Uh, that's a China name. YY um, has been quiet, but that usually catches action. So when they when they get hot China, they play them all. You know, they'll throw Momo. You guys remember Momo? Hasn't seen anything recent, but um, oh, nice pull there, too. Uh, that's a name that they would come after, Momo. So, but yeah, again, it's Baba and everybody else. Like, not even Baidu catches action like Baba. So, uh, all right, let's see. What do we got? CTL, Stephen, for me, that CTL is a do not touch. Uh, reason being is there has been a ton of put activity in this thing, a ton, and I mean huge size. Um, and they have some lawsuit overhang. I don't know the logistics of it, the details of it, but anytime there's some bull flow in this CTL, just when you think the flow might be starting to turn, boom, a barrage of put buyers come in. So there's just too much better shit out there, you know? I get it. It's tempting. They hammered this thing. Uh, but until I see sustained flow clean up, I don't have an interest. I don't have an interest. Um, that's another name on my uh, – somebody asked me about that recently, um, and hopefully they listened to my advice to just ignore – uh, the flow that you're going to see on Twitter every single earning season in LC because it's as useless as flow will ever be. Every earnings, you will see some call flow there, shorts protecting, hedging, some stock rep um, and this stock has been useless. Maybe there'll be a day where this thing has its day, um, but I know there are certain names that around earnings will catch flow, and it's just not real, and this LC is one of them. Um, like I said, somebody asked me about that because they must have seen some flow pre-earnings and their size, so if you're not familiar with it, you're like, oh, shit, someone's loading up earnings, um, but hopefully they listened and stayed away because, uh, again, it's, it's never real, nonsense. Uh, yeah, Splunk, Jim um, mentioned a bit earlier, this thing has been incredible. You have earnings coming up. I would probably look to take off some risk before that uh, and leave a runner uh, because, yeah, again, had a nice move already uh, from where the flow has started, and earnings is a uh, crapshoot. You know, listen, a lot of the names, I get it, have had big moves off earnings. And these guys, as far as earnings flow, they're going to nail some big winners. It's going to happen. But there are going to be losers in between that. So if you're okay with your winning down um, and a lot more losers than you're accustomed to, uh, you can play earnings. You know, I get it. But just expect you know, more of your calls going to zero because that's that's the issue. You know, as we discussed, if you're okay, if that's your strategy, then I'm going in, my calls go to zero, that's my stop loss, and I'm looking, you know, for the earnings catalyst to be, a, you know, that big hit per se. So you're looking for 
big risk reward opportunities and that's your strategy that's a whole different can of worms but if you think you know you're just going to make money off earnings and there's going to be nothing but winners or flow and blah 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 you're going to be in for a, a rude awakening and Jim I'm not saying you are I'm just making that point uh, because I know a lot of people like to play earnings uh, but yeah OCLR that's the way I would play it uh, be, you know, at some point here before earnings, taking off a chunk and leaving a runner. If if I want to leave a runner, uh, but she has she has big play capabilities, so it might be worth leaving a runner. You know, if they get it right this quarter, you could definitely see this thing go. And they played it the last two quarters. I will say that they bombed it last quarter, as a lot of you remember, and. They hit it pretty nicely this this quarter. Twice. Um, Home Depot. Yeah, I haven't seen any Home Depot flow. I haven't seen anything. Some um, couple members brought that to my attention last week that Home Depot's been silent flow wise. I don't know if that's good or bad. I have no idea. So there there hasn't been any there. I'm sure as we get closer to earnings, um, some flow will pop up. You know what I mean? Some spec action and stuff like that. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see this week. You know, I mean, hopefully for a setup there, again, hoping the stock doesn't do much, and then we get some action. Because I like I like the setup there. That's what's appetizing. You know, you got a light, you got a little breather here, unlike most other things. But how do you know, like for me, without the flow, how do you know this breather doesn't turn into this? Like, you know what I mean? What's my indicator my, of confirmation that we're going to come out of this and not stay in something like this for a bit longer? The only thing I go off of is flow. So, yeah, let's hope earnings are a non-event. You know what I mean? Maybe pop, sell-off, and... Uh, and then they, and then we see some good looking action. She could catch some good looking action. Uh, UPS caught a little bit of action last uh, on Friday. Nothing huge, uh, but some flow on Friday. I actually day traded it. I stood in it for a good portion of the day. Didn't really turn into anything. Uh, but it had some spec type flow. Put it that way. I think I have it here. Hold on, I'll show you guys. Because I know a couple of you like to trade this name. Is it on this list here? Yeah, here it is on the bottom of the screen. So you had a sweep of a thousand uh, November 114s. You paid a buck seven. Hundred thousand, hundred. Not a bad sweep. UPS can catch bigger and better, um, but not a bad sweep. On that UPS, what happened here? You go. Oh. And what I liked about it, and that's why I um, I traded it. This pull here, you know. That's what I like. So in other words, it didn't come up here, right? It, it comes off a pull. Um, this is a name to definitely eye. Earnings gone. You have a pull and a sign of sweeper activity showing up in the name again. So, you know, if you like the name already, you could, you know, uh, look for an entry off that sweep as a confirmation, or you can eye this thing and see if they come back after it again uh, this coming week, and that would set up a real nice, real nice entry. You know, because like we spoke about, one order can mean anything. It's hard to rely on one order, especially one eh order, because uh, it can mean a million different things. But when they come after it aggressively, it means one thing. So you got to have some patience sometimes and allow those things to set up or allow those things to show up uh, for the, the best of the best. You know, But UPS definitely on watch at the least. Uh, Jim is saying, I'm holding long-term calls in ZTO. What do you think? 
I, I think it's worth um, worth a shot. Worth a shot. Now, again, the move already, you're talking to the wrong one, Jim, because me, you know, it's on a $15 stock in a short amount of time. Maybe in this market, it doesn't mean much. But for me, that's a winner. You know what I mean? Um, but they did, they played Jans, and they played some Aprils. You can't see this thing next year. We're talking in February and being like, wow, remember that ZTO at 15? The stock is 50 right now, right? You can't picture that happening in this thing. So that that's, you know, that's what you got to weigh here. Uh, that's the tough decision you got to make. Now, for me, I there's no easy answer. There's no easy answer. Like Jim is pointing out, he made sure he took time on the trade, okay? So if you make that decision early on and you say, listen, I'm willing to risk those shorter-term profits because I'm trying to swing for something big here, you know, then you, you can't let it bother you if, it, you know, the short term doesn't happen that way. You understand? So I think you have to make that decision early on. It's so hard and difficult to make it on the fly. You know, if you got in ZTO, which a lot of people did for a trade, you should be looking to take profit, some profit at least. But if you, again, took the longer term perspective and said, I'm looking to buy the ZTO because this is initial activity in a $15 name that nobody knows about. And can turn into, you know, SGMS, which started at sixteen dollars and now hit fifty. I get it, and that you know it can be done, and there's some big winners that come out of it. So I, I think it's 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 up to you. You know what I mean? It's up to you, um, and what you what was your game plan going in? And if you didn't do it that way, then obviously you've got to come up with a game plan here. But you just got to understand. See, the difference, you know why it's easy when you come up with the game plan ahead of time? For me, anyway, is because I say to myself, I'm looking for the home run here. I'm looking for the big one here, okay? So I don't even get too excited. Like, you always want to be up. But the short term, if my approach is I bought Aprils and I'm leaving them alone, the little move doesn't even get me as excited as it would for a trade because I know I'm not going to. That wasn't my plan. You know, my plan was to put in what I'm willing to lose, go out to April, and I'm looking to catch a home run here. So that's why for me, the game plan ahead of time puts me in a better position than trying to make the decision on the fly. Because when you're making the decision on the fly, all right, you know what, I'm going to hold on to this a little longer. And then this thing pulls, and you give up those profits you have, you're pissed off. Now you're pissed off. Now all of a sudden you got emotions coming in, playing into your head. And then over here, right, right now you're like, oh, I'm holding this thing till next year. This is going to be a big winner. As soon as this thing pulls, you're going to be like, oh, shit, should I get out of this thing? Right? What changed? Just the price action changed. But emotionally, you're all stressed out now. Your whole game plan is thrown out of whack. So that's that's what the game plan before you press the buttons, that's where, you know, it's no magic, but it just takes a lot of the stress away uh, because you, you have a map in a sense. You already mapped out what you're looking to do. And none of the noise that happens on in the in-between change that if you have that map as opposed to if you don't. Uh, waste management, WM, no. I've seen flow in the name here and there, uh, but nothing that caught my eye recently uh, in waste management. Priceline rarely catches flow. Priceline caught uh, some weeklies um, here. They expired, had a nice trade out of it, uh, but nothing we haven't seen. And Priceline's really, really rare. You know what I mean? Extremely rare. We'll see. If they pop up, it will be interesting. Like I said, like CMG. You know, like the CMG. You know, if they pop up, 
it's interesting and worth a look for at least a trade. At least a trade. Because the guys don't show up there. The boys don't show up there too long. Uh, TXT, Renato mentioned. That's a name. By the way, that's another group that I didn't really speak about. Uh, the defense sector and stuff like that. This TXT, what is it? Aerospace defense. There's been a lot of a lot of size action in this thing. And, you know, stock has looked good. Uh, breather here. They had earnings. Oh, pre-earnings. Uh, had this wash, but then came right back. And there's been some uh, flow post-earnings. I think, did they? Oh, they played some Novembers recently. Here's some of the recent flow. The best of the action, I think, was in Jens, if I'm not mistaken. But I know they played some Novembers. Hold on. But there's been flow throughout the year in this thing. Uh, yeah, you had a small bet. So you got small for next week, the 55s. Uh, this was back in our, oh, this was the pre-earnings. 53. So at $53, a little cheaper back on 1018. Uh, caught a nice looking November sweep. Uh, those are going to expire soon. He may roll those out. Uh, some December's. Where was the, oh, here's the big Jan action. That's back in July, though. July. Yeah, so it's back here. But, yeah, TXT is one of those names that always seems to catch wise guy call by. Him. Always. No, Jordan, Momo, I mentioned just before, no. Momo's been really quiet. Small, like I said, a lot of these things always catch flow, meaning there's always some call buying, put buying out there, but not what I want to see. You know what I mean? Not what I want to see. Uh, the Momo's been quiet. Small weekly sweeps, stuff like that, um, but nothing more than that. We'll see. I, I didn't even realize there was a pull here uh, to we just mentioned it. So uh, worth an eye to see if they come into it. Uh, but again, I want to see real action, you know. Uh, AA had some action. Uh, let's see. I remember seeing some action in AAOI. 922. Wait, this. Oh, maybe it didn't even hit the board. Hold on. I remember seeing action in AAOI. Let me find it. That I remember. Uh. It might have been Friday. Yeah, this guy. November 40s at 1150 AM. I think she actually took off. Somebody was telling me that. I didn't trade it. I didn't follow it. November 40s. Yeah, they were in the money, I remember now. So at 11 o'clock, what was that? Oh, man. Yeah, so here. So she had, um, wow, like a two-buck move, a buck 30 higher closed um, a day. But, again, yeah, nothing. Uh, but a cute little sweep there, and I like that it was in the money. Prior to that, what's this? Pre oh, pre-earnings this was. So those expired. Those expired. So this is the last action there, sweep in the November 40s. Uh, what else we got? Veev, V-E-V, a lot of people ask me about that name. It used to see action, not as much. I haven't seen action in that name in a bit, V-E-E-V. -E -E but I get a lot of questions on that name. Uh, BZUN setting up for earnings. BZUN saw some small action, uh, but nothing major. Let me see if I can find it on here. But, yeah, I, th I think they still have earnings, right? Yeah, here it is. November 8th. So you had November 45s, December 40s. Right, so you have um, 
action pre earnings there on that uh, B zone. That's a China play, right? Sandeep, is that a China play? Chinese name? Yeah. So there was a little flow of uh, pre earnings. Uh, I would like to see post earnings flow, me personally, as you know. Uh, what are the names? Let me see. I skipped over a couple of you accidentally. Let me get to you guys so you don't take it personal. Uh, GE, yeah, there was some buying in GE. I don't know what to tell you on that thing. Um, there was an order Thursday that caught my eye, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Again, it's tough. You got a lot of a lot of noise, a lot of hands there. Um, there was some half decent buying that came in, and they got run over um, last month. So it's tough, tough. You know what I mean? It's just a tough name right now. There's too much noise there. Uh, what else? PRTK. Why does that sound familiar, PRTK? Where do I know that name from? PRTK. Oh, yeah. This thing caught a little bit of action, I think. There's a biotech, right? Yep. PRTK caught a uh, small buyer. I remember that. Let me see if I can. I remember that one. Maybe it didn't even hit the board, but let's see. Oh, it did. No? Oh, no, no, no. That's not it. It caught a small buyer, PRTK. Small call buyer. But I remember that name. Uh, what else? Who did I miss here? I don't want anybody to take it personal. Did I miss anybody? Uh, we spoke about Juno. Yeah, Juno... Um, you know, incredible action, but she's gone now, you know? Juno's gone. Oh, you know, by the way, SRPT is another biotech you got that equation. Catches a ton of sweeper activity, SRPT. Tons. Tons, tons, and tons. Um, SRPT, as a matter of fact, let's see. Had a nice move off some re where is it? Sweeper, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, two of them. Here's November 6th. November 10th, 57 calls. So those expire now. Uh, November 9th, December 55 calls. Uh, but if I remember correctly, this thing moved off that already, you know? Had a little pull here. But SRPT always catches action. Uh, Hey, yeah, we mentioned that earlier, HZMP, some nice action. Uh, here's the update there. Whatever no HZMP, I think I told you guys the story, but here, here's how it goes. HZMP caught a good-looking Feb sweeper. Under the radar, good-looking, sharp Feb call sweep over here, okay? Grinded higher, grinded higher, grinded higher. Then... There was some sort of news or something, because I remember there was Algo Weekly put sweepers, small, but some Algos fire off on some sort of news, okay? Weeklies, so protecting for the week, playing the downside for the week. You had this, okay? Then the buying started to surface again, okay? They were buying Novembers, you know, then they'd buy more Novembers, so... It looked interesting already from this point outside of these algo put sweepers, which were playing off some news anyway. Then in this consolidation here, they started to really get aggressive and sell puts. Okay, so that really caught our eye. The put selling caught our eye um, to the point where it was worth to take a look at this thing. So now what happened here, you have Novembers. The Novembers that they bought here early on, those got rolled out. Okay, they expire next week. So they rolled those calls out, um, and basically you have put selling and some December and Jan calls that they're in. So that, that's the game plan there. So HZMP, some impressive activity. Um, if you're looking to play it from here, I would at least December, if not Jan. I would go Jan. 
I would go Jag. Uh, but some interesting action in this HZMP. You know, again, they, they keep coming back. When they keep coming back, you know, those are the things you want to look at. You know, those are the things you want to look at. Uh, Twinkies, good old Twinkies. Uh, I'm rooting on Twinkies here because um, a buddy of mine has a big equity position in it, believe it or not, um, off the flow. He's a degenerate. And a couple of people in the room have some calls, um, November, December's, April's, that they took a shot in. Twinkies, there was some buying, not just one buyer, but there was some continuous buying throughout this whole bottom here. Now, they had earnings. They, of course, they shook the stock out before earnings. So now the earnings got it to here. The Novembers, you're going to need more. I mean, the Decembers and the rest of the stuff you have a shot on. Uh, but this Twinkies looks half decent here. I haven't seen them come back yet. All the buying was down here. So we'll see. That would be a great sign if you're in it. If they do come up here and press, uh, you know, you could get this thing moving. Uh, but again, you know, it was a roll of the dice type play, especially if you did it into earnings. And, um, you know, honestly, it was worth a roll of a dice. Who the hell's buying Twinkies, right? Who the hell is buying upside calls in Twinkies? So. Uh, Bob, great question. Retailer or the retail space. There's been a lot of action in retail, uh, but Bob, interestingly enough, they're all coming out with earnings, you know? So that's, that's a, for me, that's, you know, that's a problem. I want to see post and and then we'll get an idea if there's a real rally in retail. Uh, but we've seen drifts and drafts of bullish flow, um, the Targets, uh, even Macy's, um, Nordstrom, uh, Michaels, I think they have earnings still to come, MIK, maybe not. There was a little bit of buying there. So there's been bull flow in retail. It's been bullish, um, but it's no coincidence that earnings are coming up. You know, a lot of the earnings are here. So we'll see. Again, we'll see post earnings uh, what it looks like, and uh, it'd be a positive sign if they, you know, if that bull flow continues, because uh, there's obviously value there if they're going to squeeze them. You know, so they can squeeze these things nice, but these things have been oof. Oh, you know what else? Costco too uh, had some spec action. They've been playing these cheap weeklies in Costco, and they've been scoring on these things. Look at this, come raging back. No, um, no, no big bet, no notable bet. You know what I mean? Just spec action in this Costco. OSTK, yeah. For me, it's gone, Jim. For me, it's gone. For me, it's gone. Yeah, not. I listen. It could go to a hundred for all I know. I'm just saying, without some sort of breather, and this thing relaxed, they really, besides a quick trade. You know, there's no edge off the flow for me. On OSTK, yeah. Yeah, it got short squeezed. Uh, you know, this name, like I said, I've never seen flow in it. So when you got aggressive call buying coming into a name like that with that type of short position, you know, you have the potential for fireworks. Now, it doesn't always work out that way. But if they do get it going, this is what happens. Wow, 15%... What, shorted? 15% of the float shorted, you say? I heard it's a pretty big short position. 15% short float. Unbelievable. Yeah. So I think the trade, the, the trade opportunity in OSTK is you had earnings, but similar to what we just saw. You see a little, little breather, and then they start to sweep again. You know what I mean? Then you got an opportunity for a trade. 
Um, Jordan, what are you at? OSTK were their sweepers? Are you serious? Oh my God. Were their sweepers? Forget it. Look, uh, you must have made, you, maybe you weren't uh, here for the early part, but um, we went over the flow was ridiculous in OSTK. Look at the look at the size of these things. Yeah, just on ten twenty four, October twenty fourth, December forties, a half a million. December thirties, one point five million. Two hundred grand here, October's those expired, but that was when the stock was twenty nine. Twenty four dollars the stock was. I have four hundred grand sweeper. Uh, here the stock was twenty three. They're sweeping. Here the stock is 18 sweeper. Where they're sweepers. And that's not even, that's just the stuff that hit the board. That's not even the little guys that came after the, this thing. Like I showed you guys the, um, the 60s and 65s. Here. Oh, maybe I didn't show you guys, did I? I don't know. Is it on here? Yeah. No? Oh, here's one of them. Before earnings. Earnings, blah, blah, sweet. 425, November 65 for a quarter. This is considered small sweepers here, you know, that hit the board. I mean, that don't hit the board. Uh, these are monster bets. You know? This is a monster, that's a monster sweep there for that name. For this name, this is a monster sweep. Again, you got to go relative to the name. You know what I mean? Not all sizes are the same. Micron these days, you know, a $200,000 sweeper is peanuts. But for like a ZTO, that's a big deal. The expiration doesn't explain what? Nine seven. This? Nah, I know, you lost me. The twenty seventh. Hold on, he's asking about an order. The twenty seventh where is it? Where's this shit now? What did I do? Oh. On the twenty seventh of one month. This, you're making me dizzy now. The seventh, this nine seven. Yeah. This. That expiration. Those were October's. They expired. He's not in now. They're not alive. They these expired on nine twenty seven. They were played. 10 17, that's October. No, what do you mean for this ramp? That was play, he played October's on 9 27. This here is 10 October 24th. These are December's. These are still live. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what I mean. I'm saying the action, you were asking if there were sweepers. There's been sweepers in OSTK going back the start of the move continuously. You know? And it rarely happens that way, but they got bigger as this thing went on. You know, like I, like I said, initially OSTK, if it caught a $50,000 sweep, okay, I would take notice it would mean something to me. You know, that was the old OSTK. I mean, you could see it was catching half a million, million dollar bets. Um, so, you know, the size got bigger as it went on, but this was a name that never caught sweeper activity. Some crazy action there. Now, you know, God only knows now. But um, that's what I'm saying. The trade now, if you get a little bit of a dip like this, you get some sweeper activity, um, you know, 
it might be uh, some juice there for a trade, definitely for a day trade, that type of thing. But as far as like initially uh, initializing a position up here off any flow, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't go nuts. No way up here. All right. Anybody have any last questions before I uh, wrap it up? I got everybody's stocks. Any last stocks? Any questions on flow? We're all good. All right. So you got some names um, as far as sectors are concerned. Again, just the quality action um, and specific names, top names in each sector, and um, you know that can be useful when you're looking at a specific group as far as targeting targeting names and so on. All right. And we'll see what this week of action brings. We still have some earnings. Some big retail names, uh, Home Depot. Uh, there's a good name. He waited for the last minute to throw it in there, Mr. Sandeep. WDAY, really nice action. A really nice action going into earnings. Uh, I don't know, you know, how you play it. Maybe try to play the run up into earnings and take advantage of that. I don't. It's a tough one. Uh, but you have earnings in the way. And yeah, but you got the you got the potential for a big move here. You know, this thing really hasn't hasn't hatched. So it all depends. Like I said, depends on um, what you're looking to do. If you're looking to play your earnings, it may be worth a shot because of the action. You know, otherwise there's names now. We have some names that have already reported, um, and you could focus on post earnings flow. You know, like I said, WDC um, is one. Yeah, that's a new tech name that really hasn't done much. That caught some nice flow. So, yeah, it all depends on what type of player you are. All right, but we'll see what this week of action brings. Like I said, the one spot in the market that's a, li a little bit too hot for my liking is tech. Elsewhere, actually, it looks very interesting in my opinion. Um, and maybe at some point, that's what we see, a little breather in some of the tech that's been scorching and a rotation back into other stuff that hasn't been performing uh, because there's a there's two different markets out there you got the paypals of the world you know and then you got other names like uh, the netflixes which you know is not too bad but on a poll the tesla which hasn't done a damn thing the transportation names the industrials that were so hot that cooled down they had to cool down and they finally did. You know, that's a good thing. So maybe once the earnings are done on some of these techs, maybe they cool off a little bit and some money starts to come into the other things because uh, I think there's opportunity there. You know? So that's where you got tech, sentiment, too hot. Everything else, sentiment is favorable. So I think we look to take advantage of that um, you know, as we come out of earnings season. And then, you know, gradually they come back into tech, they always do. The financials, right? We spoke a little bit about that today. You know, breathing nicely. I mean, this is a nice breather in the financials. And they needed it. You know, not everything is PayPal. They just, you know, you have this kind of move and all the retail gets junked up here. Oh, they're going to raise rates. You got to own the banks. The banks are a must own. Like it's easy money. And then whoop, they wash them out. And that's where we want to start looking. You know, that's where we want to start looking. So, but we need to see the flow there. For me, we need to see the flow. Because how do we know, you know, this is not the start of a move lower rather than just what we've been seeing. You know, for me, it's going to be the flow, the buying, not the put buying, the call buying that helps me determine. You know, they come in to support the names. They, they come in and buy weakness. When they start staying away from buying weakness, um, you yeah, know, that becomes a troubling sign. So we'll see what happens. All right. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Anybody, if you're new, you have any questions, go to Wall Street Jesus. Uh, all the questions there as far as even membership or anything I talk about or do, uh, you go on to the strategy section, all your will find answers there.
okay? And if you're interested in signing up, we got a new three-day trial thing, no credit card, uh, where you get a pretty good feel of what we uh, You're not going to get all the features, but uh, some All right. Uh, other than that, we got half off the first month. That's the premium package. You get everything, included private Twitter. Uh, and if you're just looking for private Twitter and just the flow um, and updates and stuff, we got that for $59.99 a month. Uh, and you get access to uh, just the private Twitter, which is all the flow in real time. Uh, you just obviously you don't have audio video. Um, you're not going to be able to share, you know, with other traders and strategies and so forth. But all the flow in real time here. Every single sweep uh, is hits here. All right. And if you are a member of the premium package, this is all included. This is your premium package, you don't have to pay extra for um, premium Twitter. So, all right, but Wall Street Jesus, if you have any questions, go there. Uh, otherwise, you can hit me up on Twitter. You know where to find me. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, the op option alert um, is the data feed. They provide all the option uh, data in real time. So we get it from the best of the best. All right. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the weekend. Relax. And we'll do it again next week. Good luck next week.